No vote, let that shit bang. Welcome back, everybody, to Crows of Judgment. I have a bit of a bombshell in the uh, Ohm Wrecker versus the Van Oss crew and his attempts at basically taking all of them out, um, which have been a, a stunning failure so far. But every day, more and more seems to come to light about Ohm Wrecker's behavior and the things that he is willing to do in order to basically destroy the Van Oss crew. And... Um, what happened today was I was contacted by someone who was very close with uh, Cyan. Now, I've done a video on Cyan. Um, I was very critical of her. And for the most part, a lot of my criticisms still stand. However, I was notified of specific things that were said by Ohm Wrecker um, about Cyan and these other girls and how, um, you know, he was doing it for them. And, you know, they, they reached out to him. Oh, no, no, they reached out to Keemstar. And then they reached out to him. So he went to Keemstar. T to be very clear, um, that appears to have all been fabricated by Ohm Wrecker. Um, I'll be showing you the messages as well as playing you clips from the TJV interview with Ohm Wrecker. So you can see that um, in, in kind of like several cases, he does flat out lie. <laughs> flat out lie. Um and I have, to, of course, allegedly, um, I am assuming that the messages that were sent to me are true because the person that sent them um, is very reliable. They they have actually asked me um, to to keep them anonymous, and I'm going to respect that. Um, but that person, I can at least say, um, it has been in communication with all parties involved in some way, shape, or form, and has reached out to Cyan to get some of these messages. So before I begin, I want to make this as clear as I can. Cyan, as well as Sarah and another girl, have been attempting to, I would say, cancel Louis Calibre, but in reality, Louis uh, no longer is on YouTube, right? He doesn't have, a, 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 he's basically retired, right? I, I think he only really came back because of the stuff that Ohm Wrecker was doing. Now, I take a lot of issues with the things that I saw in the Google Doc, um, specifically claims and accusations that really cannot be substantiated and cannot be proven. And if those were taken out, um, the Google Doc is essentially... Um, the ex-girlfriends of Louie talking about the way that he treats women and... I'll be honest, Louis seems to treat women pretty poorly, uh, and that's me putting it very lightly. Uh, I've been told that what those girls want is for Louis to apologize to them so that they can have closure and everything. Um, I, I don't think Louis is ever going to apologize, right? Because Louis is okay being that type of person. And if you don't like it, don't associate with him. I do think he can be a bit... Um, and again, I'm, I'm trying to be as polite and kind as I can here. Um, I do think Louis can absolutely be emotionally manipulative and emotionally abusive. However, as somebody who was in a relationship with a girl long ago in my youth, um, who was emotionally manipulative and abusive, I can say that it's a lot harder to walk away from a situation like that. Um, than it is to just remain in that situation. But the only way out is to is to get up and go, right? Those girls, I, I hate to say it, but if they were not being treated right, should have just left, should have just walked away from Louie. And as of right now, I think that's what they need to do still because Louie is gone. Louie is no longer on YouTube and Louie is never going to apologize to them. Now, the claims that they've made against him, um, as far as his treatment of them, I understand, right? I, I get it. I think that Louis is definitely not somebody who I would ever have over to my house for dinner. However, I don't think that they have done any of the required research or, or provided any substantive evidence to support some of the more serious criminal case or criminal claims against Louie. 
Now, when it when it comes to people making uh, uh, claims that someone has uh, done something criminal online, specifically regarding children, um, cops need to be involved. Um, if they've contacted the police, good. If they haven't contacted the police, social media is not the place to be working this stuff out. And again, the things that they have shown do not support the claims that they are making as far as that goes. Um, I also still take issues with the um, potentially illegal recording of Louie when he was in California uh, by one of those girls. Um, but there is one criticism that I, I may actually have to roll back because um, – and actually, I'll play the clip from the uh, TJB interview when we get to it, as well as clarify a point that I had made in one of my other videos because – if the messages I was sent are to be believed, it didn't go down that way. <laughs> it didn't go down that way. But I want to start here because this was a person calling out H2O Delirious, right? And this claim here reminds me a little bit about one of the P word claims against Louis, which is essentially um, a girl who sent an email basically stating that uh, uh, Louis forced them to make CP. That's it. That That's literally it. That's all you have, right? There, There's no conversations with the guy. There's no proof that they've ever communicated, right? What, what we do have is a provisional driver's license, which to my understanding, um, doesn't match with the age that the girl represented herself as when she came forward with this story. So there you go. Now, one person responded to her by basically saying, like, look, um, age of consent where you live is 16 and in and where H2O lives is 16. So even if it did happen, um, it's not illegal, right? Even if it did happen, it is not anything that people should be outraged by. I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. Right. If that did occur, if he was knowingly trying to hook up with a 16 year old, then I think at the time he was 24. Obviously, that's that's not OK. <laughs> that's not OK. But there's no proof of it at all, like literally at all. Um, but I saw Omrecker basically respond. They say, you know, there is no application of consent to, to CP. Leave her alone with your bullshit. You are making actual victims intimidated and afraid to share their story. See, see, th this is the part that I think is going to be pretty funny when we get into these messages. But real victims, like actual victims, again, this girl has just said it occurred. She's provided nothing to back it up. And Omrecker is saying, nope, real victim. Um, now, Huwan points out the story she is claiming is that she was 15 in 2012. Her ID shows 1995, so that's a lie. Another lie is that it happened in 2012. Thanks to a snap memory date, at earliest, it would have taken place during 2013. Ohm, you have nothing. Now, that's that's really big because, first off, if she did say that she was 15 in 2012, her ID debunks that. But also, according to the snap memory date, couldn't have happened in 2012. Um, Omrecker responds by going like, you have not heard her story. I have. She never said anything about 15 to me, nor on Twitter. I'm just, and I'm going like, what the hell, man? Like you're, you're, you're now arguing against like publicly available information and your response to it is, but I heard her story and I believe her. That's dude, <laughs> like dude. Um, but I, I will say this. I don't think Omrecker believes any of the shit that comes out of his mouth. Or at the very least, he doesn't care, right? He doesn't care if something happened to that girl or didn't happen to that girl. Because the most important thing for Omrecker is destroying the members of the Van Oss crew, right? And, and I'm going to show you that right now. So let's play the first clip from uh, TJV's interview with him. Them because they, they, were, they wanted to get their story out there. That was a that was the reason that Kim was contacted. But Kim viewed Louis as a ghost and got more focused on what was being said with Delirious in the, the group room. That's why Kim ran with it. So again, all this stuff will be explained. Okay. Now, according to uh, uh, Omrecker in 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 this first part of the interview, uh, the girls wanted to go to Keemstar, 
But Keemstar wasn't willing to do the story unless unless it was about Delirious, right? And slight problem with that, right? No, we said if we were to talk to anyone, it would be Ethan, not Keem. I said no to Keem at the start. Don't push the narrative. We told you to talk to him. I didn't even know you were talking to him until day of after the interview. So, Cyan is flat out stating that she had no idea that Omrecker was even going on with Keemstar, and that from the start, they never wanted to go to Keemstar. Now, a lot of criticism because apparently she was willing to talk to Ethan, H3, which is no improvement whatsoever. Um, but based on the, the context of the conversation, right, when I see, no, we said if we were to talk to anyone, it would be Ethan. So it doesn't even seem like Cyan or the girls were pushing to talk to Ethan or Keem or anything of that nature. So so based on the context of that conversation, it seems like Omrecker is the one pushing these girls to come forward, right? And now, I'm sure Omrecker would lie through his crooked teeth and tell you that the reason why was because it needed to come to light. They needed to come forward. See, the thing is, this is the shit he's doing today. He was doing this shit last year to Delirious, right? When he wanted Delirious to come forward and just shove a knife in the back of every single member of the Van Oss crew, Omrecker was willing to put his story out there, make tweets about his story, right? And Delirious told him, you know, remove the tweets. Please, I don't want it. It's my story. I don't want it out there. And Omrecker is basically saying... I'll delete it, but only if you take my side. Like, dude, the the guy goes to people who he sees as victims and he forces them to come forward, right? Not because he 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 wants them uh to, to be strong and courageous and stand up. He forces them to come forward so that he can then use their stories as ammunition against other people. And and when when, when Delirious was not willing to join him on this brain damage crusade against Van Oss crew, Delirious became a target too. And, and yeah, it, it's, it's kind of nuts when you think about it that way. Now, here's the other part of the interview, right? Where he's basically going to contradict that the uh, girls were the ones who wanted to go to Keemstar, which, again, I think we can already kind of debunk here. Um, and... <laughs> Listen to what he has to say. Uh, well, I, I can't name all the girls because some of them are anonymous, but uh, they had wanted that shared. It was specifically asking somebody share this with Keem. I brought it to Keem uh, for on their behalf. When Keem wanted to talk, I was extremely hesitant. So you can kind of see it there, right? He says that the girls wanted to go to Keem, right? The girls wanted to go to Keem. He took it to Keem on their behalf, right? They contacted him and... They contacted Keem. All of it's bullshit. And actually, you can see here that the first person to actually make any sort of contact was Omrecker in March, right? Hey, Cyan, been meaning to reach out. Would you be okay with chatting sometime soon, potentially with a couple of others who previously had relationships with Louie? Thank you so much for speaking out last year. There's no doubt it took a lot of courage and strength to do so. I've come to realize that Louie has had a pattern of this for a long, long time. You may have already talked to Blank, the other girl mentioned, has never told her story, but is thinking about doing so. And, you know, they respond with sure hope they are all okay. So, originally, you know, Omrecker was like the white knight savior that these girls, you know, they, they, they sought him out so he could protect them. And now we find out that two months ago, Omrecker had reached out to those girls and was trying to whip them up into a frenzy, which he did, so that he could then use their story to go after Delirious because Delirious wasn't willing to join him in his stupid little crusade against Van Oss crew, right? I, I find that entire thing really funny, but also we, we can verify that the girls did not want to go to Keemstar. <laughs> they like Cyan's even stating, I didn't even know that you went on there until a day after you did it. So 
I, I, I feel like this dude is incredibly disgusting, right? Because again, as we've already seen in the messages between him and Delirious a year ago, this is how he behaves. This is how he acts, right? He finds people that are that are victims, right? Or at least that he sees as victims. And he isn't there to, to defend them. He isn't there to help build them up. He isn't there to provide any type of support whatsoever. He is there trying to whip them into a frenzy so he can then use them to go attack other people, right? This guy is an absolute scumbag. 100%. This guy is an absolute fucking scumbag. But we actually have a little bit more, right? Because I was told something else, right? And as we can already see, the girls didn't want to go to Keemstar. Ohmwrecker was the one who reached out to the girls from the start. And it wasn't it wasn't Cyan and Louis Evil X's trying to trying to uh uh weaponize, you know poor gullible ohm wrecker it was malicious vindictive petty ohm wrecker seeking to weaponize literally anyone he could find against vanos crew members right so i had that part of this story wrong and that is on me right assuming those messages are to be believed and again i have no reason to think that the source made those up Right, I have zero reason to believe that, but but also, um, I, I want you to hear this part because it, it just it gets even better. Heard about all these years? They offered to let me see the video, and actually, what's interesting is one of the girls that spoke out from the cyan document actually saw the video. They still have it to this day. So, I have been told, and again. This part, I cannot verify whatsoever. There's no way for me to prove or disprove this, right? And there's no way for those girls to prove or disprove this. But according to them, nobody in that group has the video of Delirious. Nobody does. They didn't go to him about Delirious. They didn't go to him uh, with anything relating to Delirious whatsoever, right? And honestly... I've been going through their Twitter feeds, right, when all this stuff was going on because I was sitting there going like, you know, if these girls were, were willing to use anybody if it meant they could take out Louie, right, which it seemed that way at the time, you go through the Twitter feeds and they make no mention uh, of Delirious at all. They are committed to exposing Louie. They don't care about Delirious from what I can see. So why do, why, why, why? Does one of those girls have a tape of Louie, right? And they showed it to to Ohmwrecker. Or sorry, they, they have a tape of of uh, of Delirious, and they showed it to Ohmwrecker, right? And, and I'm supposed to believe that, and that's why Ohmwrecker went to Keemstar. But but Keemstar, is, so so he could. It, it doesn't make any sense at all, right? You know, uh, Occam's razor, right? The the simplest solution is, is is usually it, right? And I'm like, what's simpler, right? That these girls who seemingly have no interest whatsoever in Delirious or any of them and only talk about Louis, right? They were able to locate the video of Delirious, right? They, they didn't even know about, right? It, it, and potentially they did, right? And they decided to attack Delirious so that it would blow up and then they could get all the focus on Louie, even though everybody's talking about Delirious, right? <laughs> or Ohmwrecker, a person who has been proven to be one of the most petty, toxic, vindictive, manipulative, dishonest individuals possible went to those victims, or at least as he saw them victims, and, and and just like he did with Delirious a year ago, tried to weaponize their stories for his own sick and disgusting benefit. This guy is scum. This, I, I thought it was funny because I was reading through one of these messages between these two where Ohmwrecker cannot shut up about the toxicity and they're so toxic and they're wrong and they're mean and they're bullies and 
everything I can see about this guy is he's a bully. He's dishonest. He lies. He manipulates. He uses people. <laughs> like, yeah, I, 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 I'm like, dude, like, what is this? Right? Omrecker needs to like be gone. Right? And I mean, delete his social media and forever shut the fuck up about the Van Oss crew because he he has gone to some uh, obsessive lengths trying to cancel them. And, you know, one of the reasons why I'm willing to listen to uh, the girls, right, that are going after Louie and, and kind of believe that there is some honesty in what they're saying about them not having the video of Delirious is, again, because Delirious lied about the girls wanting to go to Keemstar and Delirious lied about how the girls reached out to him for support, right? Given that he's so dishonest, right? When he then goes on here and talks about how the girls were the ones in possession of the tape and that's why it became a story, no. I, I really do believe Ohm Wrecker used those girls' story. And it doesn't excuse their behavior. It doesn't excuse the actions that they have taken in going after Louie. What it does is show that Ohm Wrecker is like the brain damage mastermind of this entire fucking crusade, right? And that's why it's been blowing up in his face so bad. That's why everybody is going after this guy and exposing him for the absolute scumbag that he is. <laughs> but we got one final thing. I just, I had to play this clip, right? Because... I also think Ohm Wrecker is a bit of a narcissist, right? Because he's about to say something here. And, and then we're going to wrap up the video. But I really want you to pay attention to what he has to say. Is if nobody believes me, they won't believe them. Like, I'm sorry, dude. This. If nobody believes me, nobody believes them, right? And nobody believes anything that comes out of Ohm Wrecker's mouth because he does this shit so constantly. And. Look, well, I don't support those girls' claims of of Louie being a P-word or anything of that nature, right? I do think that they are being honest when they say that Louie treated him like garbage, right? And look, I, I know that that's something that exists, right? I know that there are trash human beings that treat their significant others like garbage, right? And honestly, again, the only way to get out of that situation is to just, you've got to be the one to leave and you need to cut it out of your life entirely, which also means you need to stop this shit on social media. You need to cut it out altogether, block it all out, remove it from your life. That is the only way to get over it, right? <laughs> but that 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 advice also works for Ohm Wrecker, right? Because any time the Vanoss crew gets mentioned to him, any time uh, one of those people's name is brought up, I, that guy loses his shit like crazy. So so what what have we what have we learned here? Um, Ohm Wrecker lied about those girls wanting to go to Keemstar. Ohm Wrecker lied about those girls reaching out to him to go to Keemstar. Ohm Wrecker potentially potentially also lied about those girls having the tape of Delirious, the, the, the revenge porn and everything. And Ohm Wrecker, being the narcissistic jackass that he is, believes that the only way for those victim stories to, to be relevant is if people believe him. And if they don't believe him, then none of those victim stories can be believed either. Dude needs to take a break and by break i mean he needs to take his computer throw it in the bath along <laughs>